We pay the cost to be the boss. Invest without loss. Young boss media, your coverage get tossed. I'm from from Lang. And I'm Chantal. And we have our guest. Mark Anthony Hill. Woo! Let's go, <laughs> baby. For those of you who don't know, Mark is an artist extraordinaire. He has an influence of African art and also Picasso, if right. I'm not mistaken, right. Right. which is very distinct when you look very at your work. Distinct. So I know there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. We, we would just kind of go, there was just sort of a nice little conversation <laughs> yeah, happening man. here. Yeah. So we really can start digging in any way you want to, but I think the most obvious question is, how'd you start becoming an artist? I mean, not even just selling, but really creating. I want to know more about your history. Well, yeah. um, well, I'm originally, I'm from Jamaica. Two, one. Money. Why y'all say? That's how we I had, say I over here. I had a little hint. I had that, a little hint from the accent, yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, I started painting maybe uh, seventh grade. Oh, okay. In seventh grade. I started making money from art in ninth grade. Wow. It didn't take long, huh? No. Two years. No. No. What made you, because seventh, seventh grade, that's like, what, 13? Right. 13 years old. Right. I know a lot of 13 year old right. boys, especially in Jamaica, just running around. What made you pick up a paintbrush? I was originally drawing. Oh, okay. And then my art teacher was a Rastafarian. Woo! He, Bless. He, Blessing. He, he doesn't only <laughs> teach art, but he, he, he teaches everything, mm. life in general. Okay. So that, that, that confidence that he bestowed upon me molded me in a particular way. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to spend a little bit more time now fooling around with the paint. Okay. And then it just became something bigger than what he actually created just by speaking about it. Hmm. That feels like a connection, right? Yeah. That's what Monica was just talking yeah, about. You gotta, yeah. you gotta speak it, you gotta write you it down. To. Mm -hmm. have to. Sure. Have okay, to. so the next part, I'm, I'm thinking of you running around 14 years old selling, selling art. Selling art. What's the first thing you sold? My first painting was a landscape. And it was a lady from Belgium by the name of Miss Hitchens. Hmm. She was the first person who said to me, I can get you $7,000 for that painting. Shh, stop. At the time. First, first painting? First painting. What were you thinking? I was like, OK, when do you want me to take you to the gallery? Right, let me. <laughs> of course. Show me the yeah, money, baby. Uh, and she said, Show I'll, me the money. I'll take it now. Wow. She took it. And I went back there the Friday. She gave me the money. And she said, bring me something else. And I took something there the Monday and went back the Friday and she gave me the money and she was like, bring me something else. So she sold like... So she started using you consistently. Right, right. She, she so sold she like, saw your vision. Right. Wow. That's good. She sold 25 works for me in, in, in less than a month. 25 yeah. pieces in less than, a, less than, less than, than a, month. a month? Which also means you produced 25 yeah. pieces. Yeah, yeah. Because, right? because by then I wasn't going to class. I wasn't, I was just, Focus on painting, 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 painting. And we're talking still ninth grade. Still ninth grade. One month. Yeah. So by then you must have been thinking. Uh, how old are you now? At that time I was like 15. No, well, not, right now how old are you? 15. 50? No, I'm talking about now how old are you? 15. <laughs> You're like 15. This is just the other Come on. This is just the other day. This is just yesterday. I'm kidding, kidding. I'm 40. A 40? Yeah. Oh, all right. So yeah. yeah. So, so that was like. I was like in the 70s, right? no. if I was correct, 80s? No, I'm talking about 1993, 1994. Okay, I'm an 85 baby, so you know, I'm 33. Yeah, underestimating the years. Yeah, I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, I ain't even got no grades, but you know, they growing. I'm a 1978 <laughs> guy, you know? Okay, yeah. yeah, so that means there's a little bit of hip hop mixed right. in there. Uh -huh. So, you know, but he was raised, he was raised in the right era. And yeah. so we gotta ask what you were listening to Back in Jamaica. Of course, you have to be the Marley. Well, well, you have, it has to to in Jamaica. Um, in the early part of it, it was more like the 80s DJ. So we were more influenced by Super Cat. Mm, Are yeah. you a dancer? Yellow Man, no. No. He said Yellow that so Man? quick. Yeah, no. no, don't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> then when I, when I was in, 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 in college, because th that is what we call it in Jamaica, the school I was going to was not a high school, it mm -hmm. was a college. It was a college. Right. So. Then we had the Biggie and the Tupac era right there. But it, for me, it break when Tupac died. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah it stopped for right there. a lot there. of people. Yeah, for it a lot stopped of people right there. there. By yeah. then I was more, okay, now what do I do? Because I knew from the first time I heard Brenda got a baby, I knew that I'm, I, I'm not going any further. This is him. That's it. 
I have listened to another artist since. So wow. you, so you don't have any artists no. currently that you no. sort of no. nah. I got a couple. Well, I got we know a couple. You got at least the top. Well, my number, bro, my number <laughs> one, my number one, and I also DJed for him was Nas. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Nasir, <laughs> government name, like yeah, I, like that one moment, that one time that I DJed for him, it was just amazing. Okay. Best time of my life, because I would have never known, because I worked for this label that he signed to, so they told me, yo, we need you to DJ for Nas. Then after that, a couple months later, yo, we need you to DJ for Luda. A couple months later, yo, you gotta go on tour with Lil Wayne, Two Chains, and uh, Ti. Okay. So like my my stuff, my story is just all over the place, man. <laughs> But, but you know, I think that the one thing that's true of every artist is they got a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And I'm thinking that you, you have to go through that breaking barrier in a month. What is what is that process? What do you how do you go from zero to Because at that time it was more of a searching period. Huh. Mm. And when you're searching, that is what will happen. Because you're searching to find where does my art fit. So you're doing you're doing a lot of stuff. You're painting this, you're painting that, so because you're searching until you find the right spot, then you'll be like, this is it. And that's why I laugh when people ask me, yo, what type of DJ are you? What type of DJ am I? I listen to everything. Yeah. I yeah. play everything. I play for the people. Whatever yeah. I see, I scan the crowd, and it, that's what I do. <laughs> when was your hit moment? How did you know where you found your lane? Like, this is my calling. The, the thing with us as artists is that we have multiple identities. Mm -hmm. we, true. We, we don't know where the hit is going to come or when. Sure, sure. And not hit for other people, no. but in terms of you finding the, your the, own. Right. You're finding right. your lane. Because and being able to express that really. Right, because we're constantly evolving mm. with the work procession. Some artists don't evolve. Mm. That, no, that this is true. Like a good thing. No, I've seen, right. I've seen artists that don't. They, they, they stay plateau, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And some artists does evolve because they are, they are constantly being inspired. So the work changes over time, over time, over time. What's inspiring you right now? I think the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> the ceiling. Yeah. The ceiling looks yeah. inspiring. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but because it is going in so much directions, and you're trying to make sense of it. Where does it start? Where does it end? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know. So you tend to stay in the middle. I would love to walk around in your brain. That's psychology right <laughs> there. That's, or like they say, up. this is conscience. <laughs> this is conscience. You will not find this nowhere. You will not hear this nowhere. Only here at Culture Dome. <laughs> well, you know, we're talking about all this art. We're talking about visions and yeah. finding your voice and all that. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in the mix, you also want to, you want a bobsled team? You were, you were well, a Jamaican bobsled? Yeah, bobsled? yeah, because again, it comes back to the same thing. I got bored for a long period of time because I was playing high school soccer while okay. I was painting. And then I left high school and I went into the, 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 the higher leagues in the country. Okay. And it, and it got bored. It, I got bored. Wow. Really bored. Right? You're got, just too talented for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then my coach came to me and he was like, Mark, how would you like to do the bobsledding? And I was like, what the hell is a bobsled? <laughs> yeah. So this is like pre-cool runnings. Right. We, we don't know what, what's going Trust on at all. No. So how did you say, yeah, I'm going to do bobsledding? He said to me, listen, go home, get your clothes off, go to the video store, get the VCR, and, and, rent, this, and rent the cassette. Cool runnings. <laughs> he literally said rent cool runnings. That's this is no joke, people. Right. We're talking real life. Real life. Real, real life, life Jamaican bobsledding exactly. inspiration exactly. right now. So I went and I rented it, went home, put it in, and I was like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Coach, I don't know, coach. Yeah, but I'll think about it. And then I went back to him and I was like, listen, I'll do it. Yeah? It's a challenge, I'll do it. Because it was a challenge. Because it's a right. challenge. It's I see, that. New. I see that. that. That's your style. I'll do it. Okay. And he was like, okay, now this is really thing. Be careful. So I said, I'll do it. And I started in I started training in 1998. That is like two years after mm. I left school. Yeah. Wow. So I joined it pretty young. I yeah. joined it like and when I was 19. Wow. Yeah. How long did you stick with it? I stick with it until 2006. It's a while. Okay. So you and were pretty it, good. Yeah. The but challenge worked out. The challenge was good, <laughs> and the pressure. The pressure yeah. was right, because the pressure taught me responsibility. Mm -hmm. How to be responsible. Does that help now, even as an artist? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, going under pressure sometimes yeah. does work because I was the driver. So I had to take the, okay. the responsibility wow. of the other guys. That you were the driver. Here. Right. So that, that's, yeah, that's big that's responsibility. The guy, that's, right. the, that's the guy with the... At the front. Uh -huh. the right. He's at the right. front line. Right. Right. He's right. at the front right. line. Okay. <laughs> so I did it for a while, and then I got bored again. You got bored again? Yeah, because the traveling now was getting too much. Mm. Did you, you were going worldwide? How it, was it looking? It was like six months in Europe, and then we'll go back to Jamaica, and then we have to prepare again for Europe. So it was, it was, it was a challenge, really. It, it, it got monotonous, and these 15, 16 hour flights, and consistently, and we were, I was practically living from this week I may be in France, the following week I may be in Norway. It was like, yeah, well, so <laughs> oh, yeah wherever the no. ice is at, it, it, that's where he's at. <laughs> Honestly, it, 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 it wasn't that bad until you're in it. Mm. Then it becomes like, okay. Then you don't want to do it as yeah, long. Yeah. yeah, 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 I can see that. The traveling was... was so how yeah, it takes a toll on you. Which thing was going to be the path that was art always under the, under the radar? R R to be honest, listen, I knew it was going to be art when I stopped bobsledding and I came here in 2007. Mm. So the next year. Right, so I got right. introduced mm -hmm. to some people in, in South Florida and they have never seen my work. But yeah. what happened is that they decided that they are going to put me on a group exhibition. And the, the curator was like, have you seen his work? You are putting him on, but you have never seen his work. Mm. Mm. We need to see his work. Sure. And they see the work and it was like, well, we are not going to use him. <laughs> Well, talk about exhibitions. Right. We're not Let, going to Let's it. talk about Art Boss. Good. Let's jump in it. <laughs> Tell me more about it, man. Art Boss. Because I know it's you, it's you. You're the feature. You're the show. Art Boss. You're the guy. I'm, a, I'm the guy next to the guy. All right. Let he's the man. Me, let me tell you the real <laughs> thing about Art Boss. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to try to put it in at least two minutes, maybe three. When I decided to continue painting, I didn't know how or what I was going to paint. Mm. So I had to go and study Picasso and all them guys to see what is it I'm going to do. Surprisingly, Picasso was making himself famous by doing African art. Mm -hmm. And that is what they call Cubism. Mm. It's Cubism. really African art. Mm. Wow. Right. Facts. Right. You probably learned that today. Mm. Right. Heard that. So when he did the painting, the Brothels of Avignon in 1907, it was African art he was really looking at. And that was a painting that changed the art world forever. Mm. But he didn't give it any credit. So I said, you know what? Wow. I'm going to take it another level and represent what it truly means. Wow. So I did the first solar exhibition in, in Tribeca last year, October. Yeah. Monica came. And she was like, hey, Mark, the Harley Brother Sounds is coming up and nobody, nobody's doing anything about it. So I said, okay. How would you like to do it? I was like, yeah, sure, yeah. But I think the way I answered her, she was more like, is he for real? <laughs> 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 you know, so I said, yeah, I'll do it. And I went back to South Florida and completed like 15 or 16 pieces of works within two weeks. Mm. I did it. I started the process in the, the east of April. So you, what, you just locked yourself in a room? I just went <laughs> all the way up into Daytona, mm. and I just painted. Wow. Yeah. I would and, love to be and, a fly and, on the wall. And that is how Art Boss really, yeah. you know? And I, and I try to encourage her to do it because the, the culture, the black culture, needs to understand that art was always a part of us. Mm. We, mm. we just didn't understand the value, the value of, the of it. Yep. Yeah. So we gave it away for little yeah. or nothing. And now these things are locked away in some of the greatest museums for trillions of dollars underneath laser security. Wow. And this is where we are at. So we have to understand the importance. I like the fact that you culture. named it the Renaissance Rebirth. Yeah. It was, it was Monica's idea. Ah. She was the brain behind yeah. the concept. I was just the artist painting 
the movement of the Renaissance. Yes. Yeah. It's not, I'm not really painting the individual because the movement is greater the, than the individual. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. So it was more her idea. For me, it was emotional, sometimes bittersweet, but then sometimes I look at it like you're creating the easier pathway for your child or children. Yeah. So you're making the necessary things and putting them in place mm -hmm. for the betterment of your child. So they don't have it that hard. Sure. So studying the Renaissance, it brought all of that to light. Mm. Because it, it, it honestly, it requires a great amount of reading, researching. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it's like, then yeah. you have to go and paint it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a whole nother interpretation. Not, yeah. yeah. Like, so, that's why I can't wait. July 10th through the 14th. Yes. I can't wait. And my grandparents, rest in peace to both of them, they grew up in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance. So it's I'm going with the music, the event. art, the writing, the culture, yeah. all of it. And I know that's going to be a part of what oh, this, yeah. really, this event really, really is. is. It's like yeah. a whole oh, yeah. cultural experience. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see your great... And I, I now I feel bad for even saying that you're inspired by Picasso. I feel like I really yeah. should say by African cubism. African cubism. Right? And then we'll see what it's really like. But before we go, of course... It's time to play that game. It's time to play a game. So today's game is two truths Let's and a conspiracy go. theory. Okay. All right, because you know our people love a good conspiracy theory. We love it. And I know you're Jamaican. <laughs> you know better than anybody. <laughs> conspiracy. So here's how this works, all right? I'm going to name three different things. Two of them are actual, factual, proven facts. Mm -hmm. The other one is just a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. we, don't really, we don't really know if it's true or false, but most likely... Okay. It's not real. Okay. <laughs> I might have just made it up. So, you ready? I'm ready. Thinking cap on. I'm ready. I know you stay ready for a oh, challenge. No, he's a so visualist. I don't even know. I don't know <laughs> he's why. He's an artist. This man. Let's see. I'm ready. So I, you know, I, I know he knows the challenge is ready. Okay. So the first, <laughs> the first fact or maybe conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy anyway. Is that Canada developed a gay dar, a machine to test if people were gay in the 1960s. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Second theory. The U.S., same time period, they learned about pheromones, right? We all know what pheromones are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They people attracted to each other. They tried to drop a pheromone bomb to make soldiers so sexually attracted to each other that they wouldn't be able to fight. They just wouldn't be able to do it. They're just like, we're going to test this out. Oh, hell no. All right? So, third theory. It was around the same time, 1960s, during commercials, they were playing messages backwards to make people buy more bacon. So, you know those what? are the three, all right? What, what you think? I'll go with the first one as being false. Being false. So you don't think Canada really came up with a machine no. to test if people were gay? No. You know what? I wish it wasn't true. But it's true, y'all. Oh, oh, it's man. true. I don't know why it's true. Oh my in the God! The 60s Canada. What in the what in the party? What's going on? on? I couldn't tell you if it worked. I just know that it's a fact. <laughs> also, a fact that U.S. did try to develop a pheromone bomb wow. to make people so sexually attracted to each other. They're like, I'm they so be able sexy to for my shirt. Just disarm so you with, yeah. the with the sexy, you know what I mean? Yeah. You understand that. Come okay. on. Of course, that's basically what you do. That's how, <laughs> that's how you got them painted souls. <laughs> 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 Which means that, that obviously what's not true is that that's not how the U.S. got people to buy bacon. They just straight up started showing people pictures of bacon next to their breakfast and yep. saying, remember okay. that down home bacon? You want this crispy, crispy bacon with your eggs. And now we all eat bacon with that breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the sizzle. It's uh -huh. about the sizzle. That smell, that's what uh -huh. gets the, that's what gets the. That smell. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for playing our game. Yes. Mark sir. Anthony Hill, art boss, Harlem Renaissance. Yeah. July Renaissance 10th rebirth. to the 14th. 14th. Get your tickets on Eventbrite. And thank you for joining us for the first. For the first. Ever. 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 Culture Dome. Culture Dome. I go by the name of DJ D. Preezy. I'm Chantel. And we'll catch Mark you next Anthony time. Hill. Look at him. They didn't even let Mark get, get his <laughs> name out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.